actually not here right now. I'm in California. Impossible. Uh, I think we're going to do the next episode of the tech um, at a secret location, possibly with Paul's hardware. That could be interesting. He's he's uh, I didn't even tell you this. He's offered he's offered to let us come over and hang out for a little bit. I'm going to California. And the purpose of the trip is I'm going to be meeting with some of the, the writers from uh, Robot Chicken who have also written Nerds the Musical, which I think some of you guys may be interested in, even if your your hard exterior shell is uh, not into musicals. It's a musical on Broadway, but it's basically Pirates of Silicon Valley. It shows the story of Gates and Jobs as they got started and then battled it out. And it, I thought it was pretty funny. And Kane went with me, and we, we both saw that, uh, the premiere, or not the premiere, like the off-Broadway version of it in, in Philadelphia. But, yeah, so I'm going to go out there and talk to them, check that out, see what's up, and then also hang out with uh, Paul and Kyle, maybe who who knows who else I might be hanging out with out there. So I'm doing that right now anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't, it it's, cool. it's not going to be good you hanging out with a bunch of comedy writers. It's just going to be bad pun central the whole <laughs> time. <laughs> oh, God. it could. Yeah, it's going to derail severely, so... That'll be a, an interesting shenanigans video. Don't forget, when you're working with those guys, the math puns, stay away from them because math puns are the first sign of in, uh, insanity. Space madness. <laughs> I'll, be eating, I'll be eating bars of soap in the bathroom. <laughs> I'll be out in a minute. <laughs> oh, God. We've got plenty of math puns about Windows 9 or 10 or whatever the hell they're calling it. Hmm. Oh, hey there, Logan. Yes, it seems Microsoft finally unveiled their new version of Windows. However, Windows 9 got 10 tinnitus and couldn't show up to the release. Why the hell is it Windows 10? Uh, well, Wendell, well, we have the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, it turns out uh, there's a link. I don't know if we have it or not, but if you go, there's a code search engine. If you go search like every code under the sun, the off the shelf code that has been copy paste into thousands of applications that checks what version of Windows you're running checks for the substring of Windows 9 because that was the substring of Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows ME would re return Windows 9 something for the Windows version and so <laughs> those programs will think that Windows 9 is Windows 95 or Windows 98 those very old programs but that, that code persists I mean pretty far today so uh, so I think that's uh, at least that is a really good engineering reason why not to call it Windows 9. Can they work around it? Yeah, there are ways to work around it. But uh, from a programming standpoint, there are probably a huge amount of legacy applications out there that are still in use. And Windows 9 would be misdetected as Windows 95. Oops. Um, let's take a look at the start menu. So there it is. The start menu is there. It's uh, it's back. It's a real start menu. You have the option of also using the start screen, but on the desktop version, you can do this um, start menu thing. And then let's say you open up, uh, let's look at some of this awful news here that's always uh, just out of whack. So you open up the news here, and as you can see, it opens up, you can open it up full screen, but there's, you know, the stupid hand thing from Windows 8 is not there. It's not made for a touch device anymore. The apps now open up in standard Windows they look a little different because they've got the modern app icon over here. But you can minimize them, close them. The one thing that's weird about snapping on the on the modern apps is they do not snap normally. You know, let's uh, snap it. They uh, like they don't they don't all go into a corner of this or a quarter of the screen. They sort of take up more of the screen than they should. It's weird. They they don't follow the same snapping rules, so that can make things a bit queer when you're you know navigating around yeah i did not have to go in and change like my default programs and that sort of thing it immediately knew uh, or imme it immediately defaulted everything to the standard windows desktop applications like the windows photo viewer instead of the bubbly photo viewer that you get with windows 8 so it's a much better experience right out of the box for desktop users and i gotta applaud them for that all right, uh, there we go. Let's move on to, uh, oh, yeah, the malware that infected USB firmware. And people were freaking out about this. There was uh, we, we reported on this several months ago. Uh, but apparently it's an unpatchable malware that when you plug your USB device into an infected thing, it rewrites a portion of the firmware so that it's infected and there's nothing you can do about it. Now, Wendell, I'll let you take it from here. Uh last year so there was a there was a presentation like a black hat presentation or something about this and it was like well this is so severe you know this controller is used everywhere we're not going to disclose it and i think in the episode of the tech unless we cut it i don't think we cut it i said mm, it's probably not every controller under the sun it's probably based on like the intel 8051 and uh it's probably fison because i've worked with the fison controller and it's basically wide open so anything that uses a fison controller that is has eprom or flash 
uh, you can totally go nuts with it. And a lot of flash drives do have the flash-based FISIN controllers. Not all of them have flash-based. It's Some of them are mask ROM. So the ones that are mask ROM wouldn't be susceptible to this. But some other researchers apparently saw the black hat thing and were like, oh, we can figure this out. And so they've published their code to GitHub. And sure enough, it's an Intel 8051 uh, controller based on the FISIN microcontroller. So it's like, I could have told you it's vulnerable. It's vulnerable by design because it's flexible. So yeah, the, the hardware totally doesn't really have any security. Fison has absolutely taken over the universe, but I guarantee you other vendors like SanDisk um, and other flash memory controller vendors have similar problems. They're just less obfuscated. Fison would give you their software development kits without too much headache. And their platform was fairly open from like a hardware development from like a programmer standpoint. So I, I did some custom development and custom applications with a Fison microcontroller. And it was actually really cool, all the stuff that you could do with it. But it's also really open. So, you know, if you, if you buy, there are certain like Sony ones, especially the ones that can emulate a CD-ROM. Like you plug in the flash drive and it's like, I'm a USB CD-ROM and I've also got flash storage. Those controllers are the most susceptible ones for getting malware that you that live in the firmware. You can't get rid of it. So that's kind of a problem. <laughs> Butterfly Labs, we've got another follow-up for you guys. Butterfly Labs, the FTC has cracked down on Butterfly Labs. Uh, it's fine, they're finally getting involved with some, some Bitcoin stuff, but it's mostly because they're defrauding a lot of their, their customers. And uh, you had someone in the office there pick up one of these, right? Yeah, we had uh, we've we've got one of the Butterfly Labs like 500 giga hash per second units or whatever, but the it's just like we said a few months ago or a few years ago. It's like they have devices, but why would they ship them to customers? They would just keep them. And the FTC just yesterday or the day before published a report 